Tesla is arguably the world's biggest robotics company. Did you catch that? Let me save you the stress of rewinding. Elon just called Tesla arguably the biggest robotics company. Well, he didn't just say it. He said it last year in August during the Tesla AI Day when he also announced the company's plans to make a humanoid robot prototype called Optimus available this year. Tesla's Optimus Subprime. So many people, myself included, thought that this Tesla bot prototype promise was just another one of Elon's exaggerated timelines. Today, my take, Tesla bot probably won't exist anytime soon either. You know, I know they said on stage there would be a prototype maybe next year. I, uh, I, I kind of doubt. Pretty soon because last August he gave a, a very unexpected timeline for when we'll see one of these. Uh, we think we'll probably have uh, a prototype Sometime next year. Roll the clip. Autonomous robo taxis for Tesla next year. Uh, next year. I mean, it's looking quite likely that it will be next year. But maybe that's not fair. And there's good technological reasons for that, as we'll see later in this video. But despite the many rolled eyes and murmurs, Musk might actually come good this time. Uh, knock on wood. On June 3rd, the man tweeted that not only is a prototype likely to be available, it's also the reason that this year's Tesla AI Day was moved from August 19th to September 30th. He added that the first prototype would not look anything like the display model shown during the AI Day last year, and also during the Cyber Rodeo event at the Giga Texas manufacturing facility. With that model, it was designed designed with lightweight materials, stands at 5 foot 8 and weighs 125 pounds. The robot has a face with a screen for useful information, two axis feet for balancing and force feedback sensing on the ankles, 40 electromechanical actuators for motion around the joints, and the one I actually do struggle to believe, human level hands. Beyond the mechanical buildup, the robot also has features for AI, machine learning and deep learning. Features like the autopilot cameras, FSD monitors, auto labeling, multicam video, neural network networks and neural net planning, and perhaps most importantly, dojo training. But more on that in a minute. The scary part of the presentation came when Elon said uh, this. We're setting it such that it is um, at a mechanical level, at a physical level, uh, you can run away from it. Um, <laughs> and, and most likely overpower it. <laughs> so uh, hopefully that doesn't ever happen, but um, you never know. Sheesh. Okay, Elon, we really needed to hear that. Anyways, the robot would have a top speed of 5 miles per hour, a deadlift of 150 pounds, and a carry capacity of 45 pounds. But let's get back to what I asked at the very beginning, where Elon called Tesla a robotics company instead of an electric car company. Is Tesla truly a robotics company? First, let's differentiate between robotics and regular machines and engineering. When you or I use the word robots or robotics, we're talking about machines that can mimic the actions of sentient beings. In the in the case of humanoid robots, they can substitute for humans and replicate our actions, right? Is there anything of that sort that we know Tesla built like that? Yes, their cars. You see, of almost any car company worldwide today, Tesla has the best software for dynamically mapping and recognizing its environment. And it's this that also puts it front and center of autonomous driving technology. Plus, the high-resolution mapping display on the screen is just uh, chef's kiss. Teslas have eight cameras, providing a 360-degree field of view, as well as a radar and and ultrasonic sensors for perfect mapping of the environment. Combined with bleeding edge computer vision, machine learning, and deep learning technology, these vehicles are able to automatically label and evolve to navigate new terrain based on information from cameras and sensors. What's more, they upload the data from all the miles driven back to the network for the rest of the fleet. Essentially, this system is like a hive mind, training itself to get better, and the vehicles and their data are like the brain cells, neurons, and electrical signals. Therefore, the bigger it gets, the the more instances to evolve on and the better it gets. You see, navigation is a key action most sentient beings possess, and Tesla is the closest thing we have to a machine doing it autonomously while constantly recognizing new things in the surrounding. Uh, basically, if you think about what we're doing right now with the cars, uh, Tesla is arguably the world's biggest robotics company because our cars are, like I said, semi-sentient robots on wheels. So, if the Tesla bot is basically the Tesla vehicle transformed into a different form factor, the humanoid form, then Optimus Subprime is pretty accurate. But before I play devil's advocate, let me show you why many experts haven't backed Optimus. What critics are saying. 
So, the reception for the Tesla bot was not flattering. Like I said, even I had a lot of reservations about it, and Elon's timeline and grand descriptions didn't help either. And I think a part of that is because all the robotics companies today are not promising what he and Tesla are promising. Take Boston Dynamics, for example. They're like the leading actual robotics company out there, and despite the impressive stunts, they've made it clear that a working model is not likely to be out anytime soon. The robots still have a lot to learn. Another criticism is that the human form is not an ideal form for robots. A lot of experts agree that the best way to build a robot for a task is to make it specific enough to that task. Like, a vacuum cleaning robot is better as the actual vacuum cleaner, a cloth folder is better as this thing, flipping it on, it pulls it in, does its thing, and spits out a folded shirt uh, right at the bottom there. And even a dishwasher is a good example too. In those instances, you wouldn't want to build a humanoid robot to drive around a vacuum or be the folding machine or do the dishes. Those specific robots do the job. And what is more? You don't have a humanoid shaped robot sitting in your car driving the car for you. The car is the robot, the self-driving car that drives itself has already been done. Another point of skepticism regards some technological points concerning articulation, battery life, and balance. And when it comes to articulation concerns, I'm one of those skeptics. Because like I said earlier, human level hands are pretty damn difficult. A fingertip has at least 3,000 touch receptors. And connected to a brain, you and I are likely to slightly tap a box before carrying it just to gauge its weight. If we didn't do that, like a robot, we could smash objects or exert so much force that we would fall over. Speaking of falling over, Senior Director of Robotics Research at Boston Dynamics, Scott Kindersma, had this to say about Atlas Falls that I showed you guys earlier. If you or I were to vault over a barrier, we would take advantage of certain properties of our bodies that would not translate to the robot. Properties like our spine that lets us bend our torso and body, and properties like the excellent weight distribution Atlas doesn't have. And with battery life, it's noteworthy that top robots like Atlas use lithium-ion batteries and have battery lives of about two hours, while taking about the same time to charge. Is the Tesla bot bound to fail? Now, allow me to play devil's advocate, as promised, by addressing the criticisms. The first is the fact that other robotics companies aren't quote-unquote over-promising like Elon and Tesla. In fact, Tesla isn't the first car company to do something like this, as Honda has done this with what the website describes as the world's most advanced humanoid robot, a SEMO. And so it seems everyone has had a head start ahead of Tesla, and they're still nowhere near putting out products by 2023 as Elon has claimed for Tesla. And this is why I think that is. Pay close attention. Most of these robots can be classified into the neck up and neck down categories. So you could say Atlas or Spot from Boston Dynamics are more geared neck down robots, with the focus on robot kinematics. Still freaking impressive. And for the neck up robots, you could find ones like Amica from Engineered Arts or Sophia from Hanson Robotics. These robots are more about interacting with humans. I would argue that Tesla, however, uses an inside out approach, or back end to front end approach, in the sense of what Elon once called ASIC everything. This means building application specific integrated circuits to get the best performance for a system. In other words, the Tesla bot has an upper hand because of the already existing neural network and dojo training that has been good for its self-driving vehicles. Tesla has supervised most of the technology for this robot using technology specific for the system and use cases they envision. Unlike the other robotics and automotive companies, which, for instance, use ready-made chips from Nvidia or Intel that are general purpose and serve a wide range of applications. Tesla's FSD chip, however, has been built specifically for its self-driving technology, and even more specific is the Dojo supercomputer, which it announced on the same day Optimus was announced. And this Dojo D1 chip probably deserves its own video in the future. But the bottom line is that it has a lot of computing power never seen before in a vehicle. This computing power will improve computer vision machine learning and neural networking several times over. And basically, the Tesla bot and vehicles will become much better navigators. They will basically have a brain in the form of a neural network for adapting, recognizing, and navigating around objects. Which is the best rebuttal for the human form argument I stated earlier. The Tesla bot is built to remove repetitive, boring, and dangerous tasks, or more more accurately to do anything you don't want to do. The human form is efficient for one thing, navigation. We're not the best at any one thing. 
can walk, run, swim, glide, climb mountains, and so much more. For navigating the natural world, we have probably done it the best. And in the home, even if you had a vacuum robot or cloth folder or dishwasher, you still need to take the dirt out of the vacuum cleaner. You still need to hang the clothes into the cloth folder. And you still need to arrange the plates. Even from taking out the trash to arranging the grocery bags in your car boot. If the Tesla bot can navigate anything properly, it'd save a lot of time and be efficient for labor. This is what Elon said when talking about the differences between machines and humans in Tesla factories. Really good at adaptation um, and, and rapid evolution and like doing like little, like finicky things like, like that. Um, it's like, like trying to connect uh, a hose that, that's like sort of dangling around. Go, all right, done. Gotcha. Yeah. Grabbing the wrong thing and like trying to stick it over here. And then like, <laughs> oh, the, the, the hose was here when the robot thought it was here. And so yeah. now it like tries to grab air and then like smashes into the car. Battery, articulation, and balance. I am eager to see what Tesla does for a good battery. It's important because like I mentioned earlier with Boston Dynamics Atlas, things like a heavy battery can cause uneven weight distribution and distort balance. Lithium-ion battery packs will probably do that, but they might find a way around it. Alternatives like the Zinc Air battery, which can be structural by being built into the frame of the robot. Nicholas Kotov from the University of Michigan has also been experimenting on biomorphic batteries using Kevlar, the bulletproof vest material. And he says it can produce 72 times more energy than a single lithium-ion battery. What is interesting about these alternatives is that they resemble the way we humans store energy reserves in fatty tissues under our skin. And if applied, they also help with the center of gravity of the root by not adding a lot of weight that conventional battery packs add. Thus, balance is also resolved using a structural battery like those I just mentioned. Maybe that also has something to do with Elon saying that the prototype displayed at the next AI day will look nothing like previous display models. And as for articulation, I have absolutely no idea how they're going to make that happen. And now is probably the time to say that everything I've said so far is speculation, seeing as I'm not an expert and I know experts will be in the comments telling me what was said wrongly. But the truth is that many people believe that the AI day last year was Elon's way of recruiting top talent for other projects while getting publicity. I mean, rumors are going around that they've been working with robotics guru Dennis Hong, so who wouldn't want to work with these guys? Whatever they come up with, we'll have to wait and see for 30th of September. Or just find out that it's yet again another unrealistic timeline by our dear friend and Mr. Musk. Hey, if you enjoyed this one, you'll probably enjoy this one on the screen too. So why don't you click it?